I'm not a murtad and I'm not a kafir and you cannot say that to me. Yesterday, I posted a video about circumcision, but specifically about why I believe circumcision is archaic practice that is not good for men's health and limits our lives. And really beyond that, it's a kind of mutilation that is grotesque in my opinion. And also I described how I uncircumcised myself and how some of you can do the same. It's not just like never being circumcised, but it's better than nothing in my opinion. Now, interestingly, I received uh, a lot of responses from some of my Muslim subscribers. Most of them were understanding, but quite a large segment of the comments were actually very negative. And in particular, something very interesting happened. Even though I didn't criticize Islam in any kind of way and never indicated that I don't agree with Islam in any kind of way, I received several comments, uh, some in Arabic and some in English, calling me a kafir or a murtad. For those that don't speak Arabic, a kafir is a disbeliever. Many of you have learned this word because of Islamic terrorism over the last couple of decades. There's an even worse word. It's called murtad. Murtad is an apostate. That's someone who has believed in a religion traditionally and then departed that religion. So, for example, some people who followed the Prophet Muhammad later became actually Christians when the Islamic Empire was, ex was expanding. These people were called Murtaddin, apostates. They were also, just after the Prophet died, a large percentage of the Arab population in the Arabian Peninsula left Islam. And the first ruler after the Prophet of the Islamic Empire, his name was Abu Bakr, he was the first, first caliph. Caliph is the origin of the word California, by the way. The first caliph led a war called the War of Apostates, in which he actually burnt some of these people alive, crucified, well, I don't know if they were crucifixions, but a lot of very bad ends to some of these apostates. Many of them are very famous. One is called Al-Aswad Al-Ansi, if I remember correctly, and there are many others. So there were apostates after Islam. And Islamic jurisprudence, interestingly, has a very sophisticated way of dealing with these kind of people. Because unlike other religions, unlike many other religions, not all, Catholicism of course being different, but unlike many other religions, Islam has a political science behind it and a kind of governing structure. In Islam, according to some beliefs in the Sunni community, a person who has left Islam as a murtad, there are, they usually call them two kinds. One is an aggressive murtad and one is a passive one. The passive apostate is, in some schools of jurisprudence in the Sunni Islam, they believe that he should be jailed until he repents and rejoins Islam. And if he doesn't, then he should be executed. On the other hand, if he was an aggressive murtad, so for example, somebody that allied himself with a foreign invading army, but also left Islam, so he was attacking the Muslims in some kind of way, he would be killed on sight, not given the opportunity to repent even. Now, this is all very interesting because in battle, the Prophet Muhammad, paraphrase, said to the Muslims that if somebody says the shahada, shahada means testifying that there is no God but God and that Muhammad is his prophet. If somebody says that shahada saying there is no God but, but Allah and I, uh, in the middle of a battle, the Muslims can't attack him. They have to leave him alone. Muslims can't attack other Muslims. So this concept of tef takfir is a very important concept that, uh, that splintered the Islamic community. Oftentimes people who, in my opinion, misunderstood parts of Islam, uh, take this takfiri attitude to uh, splinter themselves from the other Muslim community. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. Going back to what I did in that video. What I did was maybe imply that people shouldn't get circumcised and maybe imply that circumcision isn't good. In Islam, there is no agreement, for those Muslims listening, ijma'. There is no agreement that circumcision is called fard'ayn, which means it's mandatory. Instead, it is considered sunnah or uh, mustahab. Sunnah means, it's, sunnah means the way of somebody. So sunnah Muhammad means the way of the Prophet Muhammad. So you can follow Islam, the basic tenets of Islam, but not necessarily follow all of the ways of Muhammad, because many of them Muhammad said that the Quran is protected, but the descriptions of how Muhammad acted are not protected. So some people don't follow all the hadiths, right? And anyway, the point is that whatever I said in that video was not uh, implying a disbelief in Islam. To criticize something that is not mandatory, it doesn't imply that disbelief and did not deserve for me to be called a kafir and murtad from people. Now I want to go a step further. I want to tell you guys a little bit about how the Prophet Muhammad considered this subject. Paraphrased, Muhammad said that if somebody calls another person, if two, Muslim, if two people call another person a kafir, disbeliever within Islam, uh, thought to be within Islam, two Muslims call one, one, one calls the other a kafir, he said one of them is a kafir. So either you called somebody a disbeliever or you have actually just disbelieved. Now there are, by the way, sects of Islam that don't follow this. There are like, for example, the Ibadis in Oman. They believe that even a major sin can take you temporarily out of belief in Islam. And this is a very tricky subject. Now I want to introduce you to something else that the Prophet Muhammad said. Paraphrase the Prophet Muhammad said that what stands between a Muslim and a disbeliever is uh, prayer. 
There are five obligatory prayers in Islam. Many Muslims around the world don't uh, pray all the five prayers. I happen to, and maybe I can talk a little bit about this later, but because I happen to, and a second thing let me mention, um, what does Muslim mean as a word? Islam is a state of submission. Muslim means somebody who has submitted to God. So let me tell you a little bit about myself, although that video yesterday was not about me, but about myself. I am a person who worships one God. I pray five times a day and I believe in myself submitted to what I consider God's law on earth. So I consider that when you go with the, dri with the river of life, with the stream of life, you don't swim upstream, you don't go against nature, that you're following God's laws. You know, and I use my own intuition sometimes, as well as you know, studies, my studies of other religions to tell me what is God's law and what is not. So I really am a religious man. I try to practice a religious life, sort of similar to the life that Jordan Peterson practices or that Spinoza practiced. But I happen to pray with the Muslim prayer. So I am somebody completely undeserving of being called a kafir or a murtad. You know, there's no, you, just because I have some kind of criticism doesn't, you can't do that legally in Islam. So who are these people that, why are they so aggressive about calling people disbelievers? Well, the interesting thing is these people existed since the Prophet's day. Prophet Muhammad, I believe this hadith is in Sahih Muslim or Bukhari. It's in one of the Sahih Han. The Prophet Muhammad was once paraphrased. It was after a battle and they were spreading the booty. Booty, booty was originally like stolen, stolen stuff from other people in battle. So he was splitting the booty between his followers. And I, I, if I recall correctly, Umar al-Khattab was on his right hand side, something like that. Umar was next to him. And one of the men that they didn't really know that well came up to Muhammad and said, basically paraphrased, woe be to you, you're being unjust in the way you're splitting the booty. So Muhammad got shocked. Umar immediately took his sword out, wanted to attack the guy, and Muhammad told him to let him, let him be. When the guy left, Muhammad told Umar and the other guys what he thinks of this person. Paraphrased, Muhammad said that there will come a people like this guy. He had a shaved head and a long beard. They will have shaved heads because they don't care for the beauty of life. They want to look ugly. They want to be pious. They're extremists. They grow their beards. And these people will have, he said also, I think, I think he mentioned the mark on the head from the prayer. But I don't recall correctly. It's been, it's been years. But the point is, he said that these people will uh, read the Quran, but it will never pass their throat. They will know the Quran, but they won't feel the Quran. They won't understand the Quran. And these people were called Khawarij, which means rebels. And right after the Prophet died, and I, I believe he also may have mentioned that they will call people kuffar and fight the Muslims instead of fighting the aggressors. So when Muslims are attacked, like right now in Palestine, these Khawarij extremist Muslims, they don't go fight in Palestine. They go attack Muslims in Saudi Arabia, in Dubai, and where, they don't attack in Dubai, but they try. They try to do all of that stuff. They try to attack Muslims instead of actually fighting, but they don't fight fair or they attack innocents. This is frequently what happens. So if you guys are interested in this, right after the Prophet Muhammad died, after the first Khalifa, who only ruled for a couple of years, the three next Khalifas, which are called the, the rightly guided Caliphs, considered to be the only good ones after that it became a kingdom, those three all were assassinated, mostly by Khawarij. Khawarij, in fact, killed Uthman, uh, killed Ali. Khawarij were very involved in the battles. And in fact, they were often based in a place called Bukhara, which is near Afghanistan. So part of their idea was that they couldn't live under, a, uh, they thought that they can't rule, live under the law of Islam that is not pure. So they had a very extreme view and they moved out of the, what's called the Muslim um, Ummah. They moved outside to foreign, Ummah means the Muslim populace. They moved outside to foreign lands and they attacked from there. Interestingly, they were based around Afghanistan in those days. Anyway, these people have, I talked a little bit too long, but these people have plagued us for 1,400 years. They have different kinds of extremists came by. They always uh, have certain tenets that are similar. They often do have shaved heads. You can even look at the people that caused the September 11th thing. You look at them, they all have, a lot of them have shaved heads, the people next to them. You'll see a lot of similarities. Those guys who caused September 11th, they also used to call the Muslims kuffar. They used to, um, which means they, cause people, they tell, call people their disbelievers and apostates. They're very well known for that. That is a different kind of, that's the kind of Islam that caused a lot of the conflict and a lot of the bad reputation of Islam. Not to say that Islam is undeserving of any kind of the criticism. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying most of the criticism comes from these extremist people who attack civilians, innocent people, call people disbelievers because they have a disagreement of opinion with them and are generally not merciful. They're, 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 they move toward aggression and toward 
you know, that is not what religion is about. Religion is about spirituality, piety. Religion is about getting to a point of your spiritual connection. When you pray to God, you can start tearing from your connection to God. When you pray for people you love, you start tearing. If you're a Muslim, when you pray for the Ummah, when you pray for Palestine, you start crying. That's a beautiful, beautiful kind of Islam. Not the one where you go find, try to find your enemies from within your religion and try to kill them. I got a little bit too detailed in the explanation. I want to pull myself back. The point is, these Khawarij who are noted, these rebel, Muslim rebels, renegade Muslims, that's what they should be called in English, renegade Muslims, um, are, who are famous in the Islamic world as Takfiris and Khawarij, I want the Western people to know about them. These are not us, they are a splinter group from us that has really caused the Muslim population so much pain and suffering throughout its history and caused the neighboring people. Um, so it's important. I, I wonder if you guys are interested in these subjects. I feel like I can explain maybe many um, things about Islam and about the Arab world that maybe is hard to understand as a Westerner. So the reason why I put up my stories on Instagram yesterday showing that people were calling me an apostate and so on is to confirm two things. First, I wanted to, I thought it was educational to show Western audiences that there is this element of Islam and this is what they do and they've always existed and so on. The second thing is to say I'm not a Murtad and I'm not a Kafir and you cannot say that to me because you just want to. You can't, okay? It doesn't mean that because I don't follow an organized religion that you can call me a kafir. You can't. Anyway, guys, I hope you have a great day and I hope to see you again soon.